On today's show, BMW will collaborate with IBM to test Watson in its vehicles. GM will start building autonomous Bolt prototypes next year, and Continental thinks it has a more intuitive way of delivering audio commands. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. The other day we reported how Michigan signed new laws into action that allow autonomous cars to test on its road. And GM is already taking advantage of this. The automaker has started testing self-driving Bolt EVs at its technical center. But it will expand to some of the public roads on the outskirts of that center. And in the next few months, will move out into the metro Detroit area. This is also where GM will conduct winter testing of its autonomous vehicles. Along with this news, the automaker also announced that its Orion assembly plant in Michigan will build a test fleet of autonomous Bolt EVs starting early next year. Supplier company Continental thinks it has a more intuitive way of delivering audio commands to the driver. It has created a centralized audio management system that it calls Functional Audio. It works by sending an audio output to the side of the vehicle that a event is coming from. For example, say you're on the freeway and you go to pass slower traffic on the left, but the car's sensors pick up that somebody is already in that lane. Well, the system will send an audio cue of some sort to the left speakers to warn the driver. The same could be done for approaching traffic. Functional audio can also be used with the navigation system. If the next turn on your route is a right, the audio cue could come from the right speaker. You know, this all sounds like an interesting idea, and I'd love to test it out to see how it works. But one great part of functional audio is that you'd be able to change the sound of the turn signals. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been in some vehicles with some pretty annoying blinkers, and it would have been great to be able to change them. Still to come. BMW partners with IBM to test artificial intelligence in vehicles. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. IBM's artificial intelligence system, Watson, is sure becoming popular with automakers. Earlier this year, Local Motors, the company that 3D prints cars, installed Watson in its small autonomous bus, Ollie. And recently, General Motors announced that it will integrate Watson with OnStar. And now BMW is teaming up with IBM to research how to improve artificial intelligence systems in vehicles. The companies plan to equip four BMW i8s with IBM's Bluemix cloud platform to test how Watson can enable conversations between cars and drivers. Few years back, Honda created a personal mobility device called UniCub Beta. It's similar to a Segway in that you shift your weight to control the vehicle, but unlike the Segway, you sit on Honda's device. And now the company is letting the public try it out. For 10 days beginning on January 13th, Honda will demonstrate the UniCub at the Haneda Airport in Japan. Travelers can use it to move about the airport, and staff will also use it to assist air travelers. The device is powered by a lithium-ion battery, has a top speed of just under 4 miles per hour, and has a range of about 3.7 miles. Mobility services are set to explode over the next five years, but what impact could it have on car sales? We'll take a look at that coming up next. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport, and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work. Dow. Automakers think there's an opportunity to make big money with mobility services, and that's why we're seeing so much activity in this field. But will car and ride sharing have a negative or positive impact on car sales? On AutoLine this week, we're joined by Samir Salman, the head of supplier Continental's NAFTA region. And in the following clip, he shares his opinion on what impact mobility services will have. Will that lead to less vehicles? First of all, I think there's a lot of room 
uh, to uh, share cars because if you look at today roughly worldwide roughly six million people share cars and they share roughly hundred thousand cars and that number is going to go up in the next four or five years six times so roughly 36 million people will be sharing cars and the number of cars they will be sharing is 250,000 so if you think of if you, if you think of 2020 as an example give or take probably 100 vehicles will be will be produced uh, there's a lot of room for the for the sharing because i think what we forget in this equation is the miles driven if you take the us as an example more than 3 trillion miles um, are driven and so car sharing, what will car sharing do? In my opinion, car sharing will increase the miles driven because certain people who could not drive anymore as much all of a sudden have the potential to drive to drive much more or not drive but be driven uh, much more miles which they typically wouldn't wouldn't do. And, and you know, I can say, you know, in my private life, my, my parents would, uh, who are in the older generation, they now kind of, have their own geofence, which is around where they have to shop. And if, if they need to pick me up from the airport, it's kind of, oh, it's outside of my geofence. <laughs> I used to go there, but I don't go there anymore. But if you think about car sharing, you know, the feeling to stand there at the airport, say, okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pick you up. All of a sudden, that, that ride, which wasn't possible anymore, is possible. So there's a lot of, a lot of um, uh, opportunity and, and growth potential in, in, in ride sharing. So I'm not so worried about what you said, although there's analysis out there saying, okay, there will be probably fewer cars being built, we actually think it's going to be rather flat, but not really fewer cars. Or when I say flat, it's going to be a flatter growth rate than, than it, it, you, it would have been without uh, car sharing. For more of Samir's insight into future automotive trends, you can watch that entire discussion right now on Autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, have a great weekend, and join us again on Monday for the latest news in the global automotive industry. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.